Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the 2019 Every iPhone Comparison. It's become somewhat of a tradition on this channel and this here is no exception. It is by far the most difficult video ever to coordinate with 21 iPhones since their inception in 2007. We're gonna be talking about uh, kind of what's going on inside, what's happened in those 12 years, and what we can look forward to in the next seven to 10 years of iPhone. So I wanted to mix things up in the sense that I never showed you the interior, and I'm preparing all these boards already, so might as well mix them in. Here we have the housing story, kind of where the iPhone started with aluminum, they came back to aluminum eventually, then transitioned into stainless steel, back to aluminum with a 10R. And this year's iPhones, just wanted to give you a visual of those. And then we're gonna be going through every topic as usual. And really this video was not easy to make. So just trying to make it realistic because I skipped on last year's because of how difficult it was to make just by far, oh my goodness, the worst videos to make. But I have to do it. My first viral video was my first every iPhone comparison. So it's for me pretty interesting uh, to keep going on these. So our journey starts here with the Motorola. Most people look at this and they don't know why this is on my wall. Now, Steve Jobs announced this on stage years before the iPhone. You can sync 100 songs on it with iTunes. I really don't know if it still supports it to this day, but it would be cool. It was later superseded by the Motorola Sliver and kind of a sleeker design, also an iTunes enabled phone. And then we got to this. But even so, before this, there was a flip phone concept in the 80s of the Apple iPhone before it went to this. This is the iPhone you know and love. And then eventually, of course, we go all the way to the latest devices. And eventually I wanna have all of these glowing sometime this year, one of my goals. The timeline as it sits right now, very, very cool. And then. We'll see about this one. Yeah, eventually, this is a 2021 roughly. Hopefully, will be a square design. So business as usual, let's start with this startup test. And we have every iPhone on their latest firmwares, and I group them a little bit differently now. On the bottom are the supported iPhones, on the top are the legacy iPhones, which Apple will no longer be updating after iOS 13. And yes, I will repeat this video once the iPhone 11 is launched, and with iOS 13, it's always interesting when we get more factors in. Speed-wise, yes, the iPhones have come a long way. The original iPhone processor, which was designed by Apple but produced by Samsung, sits right there. It's about the same size as the Apple A12, but transistor-wise, this has 70 million transistors. Here we have 6.9 billion. And then beyond that one, the Apple A13 is rumored to be about as capable or more than the Apple A12X. We're in for a treat with the iPhone 11 power-wise. Let's begin with that customary startup test. One of the few metrics where you can compare the old to the new, even though iOS has changed so much, even just visually. And iOS 12.4 is looming, although all the bottom row devices are running 12.3.1 and iOS 13 is on the horizon just a little bit further here. So this doesn't really mean much in the day-to-day -day life. You don't really turn your device off that much and newer iOS has much more to load. Even so, the iPhone 8 series was the first to boot, then the 6S, and then the 7, and so on. The newest devices weren't the fastest to boot, but I don't really think that's a bad thing. They weren't slow by any means. Then the iPhone 6 series and downhill it goes. The original iPhone was not last, which made me quite happy. I'm glad to see that thing is still trucking along just fine. Then goes the iPhone 3GS, the 5 series, and the device that booted the last was, you guessed it, the iPhone 4S on iOS 9.3.5. A curse a plague upon the iPhone world. And let's migrate over to the Geekbench, one of the other metrics where you can compare to the old to the new fairly well. And I'm not including a lot of the other tests that I used to do in the comparisons. It's just ridiculously difficult to do this kind of stuff. Anyways, here are the scores we're looking at. And I'd say the iPhone really started taking off in processing power around the 6S area. The Apple A11 chip was legendary. A12 is great and A13 should do even better. So that went just about as planned. The newer iPhones, of course, are faster, but the iPhone original was not the slowest and that's good to know. Moving on, I wanted to talk about batteries here. Looking at the first iPhone battery here, the original, it looks very amateurish. It's got some cables there, soldering, very unprofessional, but it's come a long way to where we have dual cells now on the 10s Max. The iPhone 10s is now a single cell, and supposedly we're going back to the rectangle shape on the iPhone 11. It's a very, very cool transition here, very tiny. And, you know, we started with really big batteries on the 6 and 6 Plus, and they kind of shrunk over time uh, on the 8 Plus over here, 8, 8 Plus. It's very interesting. Apple goes through all these changes, and there's so much engineering that goes into every decision they make. 
On the logic boards, it's very interesting to me that the original iPhone was a stacked logic board. It used a connector here and they went back to stacked on the iPhone 10 and perfected it on the 10s, and then on the iPhone 11 further refined it. So kind of the idea here is Apple is perfecting the iPhone and has become more and more clear throughout the years that they are trying to reach the ultimate iPhone. And we'll talk about the future of that in a second. But the iPhone eventually will get to a point where it can't be made any better. No notch, just perfect sound with the speakers. By the way, the speakers alone are incredible. It's really funny to me that they started here on this very silly looking speaker and then look at the transition. They went to the box design and then started refining it on the six all the way up to the eight. This is a very interesting blend here. The antenna is now uh, combined with other components. It's very, very cool. And then it gets even more dense and smaller here. And then the iPhone 11 is supposed to be using a new material where it can be smaller, but still louder. As far as sound quality goes, Apple has come a long way here. So for example, here's an iPhone 5S, Welcome back my guys. video. A lot's happened in just one week. Doesn't sound very clear. Everyone's iPhone in their pocket right now is vulnerable to attack. And then here's the tennis Max. Welcome back, guys. There's a lot of news to cover. Oof. A lot's happened in just one week. We've learned that everyone's iPhone in their pocket right now is vulnerable. So a lot richer, more deep. You can hear my voice more sternly, I guess. On the iPhone 5S is very tinny. And biometrics. It all started here on the iPhone 5S with Touch ID, the golden ring of glory. Still remember waiting in line for that bad boy. And now with iOS 13, a little cheating here, Face ID is even faster. Let's compare the two. The true metric here. One, two, three. Wow. Ridiculously close. Once again. One, two, three. Wow. So Touch ID Generation 1 is the same speed as Face ID on iOS 13 on the Tennis Max. I'm blown away here. Oh, and it's repeatable. So that's amazing. Let's hope Face ID gets a little faster because I expected it to be faster here. Other little intricate pieces here. The Taptic Engine, looking at this, it's so, so interesting. They started in this little dinky little pinky here. And then look at this. This is the Taptic Engine of the modern day. They were huge on the 8 Plus, kind of got smaller as the phones a little shrunk a little bit, but still the same amount of power, if not more than these. Flash forward. Now, not to rag on Android or anything, but looking at their original Galaxy S series and the Galaxy S10, practically not changed. It's maybe a little bit larger, but using the same basic technology. It's amazing to me that in 12 years, Apple went from this to this and inside the intricacies of how it works, it's mind blowing. Now, moving on to the cameras, you know, the Galaxy certainly went through some transitions here too. Uh, this one's missing, but basically they started at this little pinhole camera. That's the first iPhone, two megapixels, a little pinhole camera. By the way, the camera test we just ran, just to give you some perspective here, the original iPhone, very fuzzy uh, looking at it and I want to run that test by real quick before proceeding. We're going to do the iPhone 2G first versus the 10s Max. So where it started, where it's now 12 years later, and video tests with the iPhone 3GS, the first officially video capable iPhone. Here we go. One, two, three. Got some beautiful details in there. Very foggy on the 3GS, but still when this came out, yes, it was behind Android years, but people were excited about the video camera on the iPhone for the first time ever. And the camera app really hasn't changed much 12 years later. Wow, yeah, I could take pictures now during, but can't even activate the flash or anything. There is zoom. So, world of difference in terms of quality. And the iPhone 4, the first video capable iPhone. Let's test that against a light backdrop. And let's migrate over here. So not too bad for the era. And years later, here we are. Now on the iPhone 11, we're gonna get the best quality ever. So the tennis max isn't even the true metric, but right now in 2019, this is as good as it gets. Also a quick nighttime shot here. On the left, the 3GS, on the right, tennis max. It's good, I mean, better on the tennis max, but by now I'd expect Apple to be so much better off in nighttime environments. And as you can see, the cameras certainly have went through some evolution. We're gonna see the biggest ever this year. And I know this isn't an iPhone 11 video, but I keep referencing it because this is all leading up 
to that perfection, which everybody hates, but the camera will certainly be getting better. All right, so a couple more things I wanted to mention. Time flies. This is 12 years going on 13, and this is the culmination of where we got, the 10s, 10s Max, and 10R. Now, the next 10 years of Apple are going to be very interesting. Like I mentioned, Apple is working on the perfect iPhone, and for this year, we're gonna get the new evolved lens. Next year, we're getting an even larger iPhone, less bezel, and hopefully no notch. Hopefully. Apple throws a wild card in there uh, with the 6.7 inch mammoth iPhone and the 5.4 inch, which is a shrunken version of the iPhone XS right now. We're in for a treat, I think, and it's a redesign, so it's going to be a very big year. But beyond that, Apple is working towards perfection, a screen with no notches, a MagSafe connector instead of USB-C or Lightning, which they will be going to USB-C in 2020, so we hear. Hopefully battery technology matures by then as well. The processor will have been perfected. After the A14, how much better, how much more dense can the processor possibly get before Moore's law is no longer valid? We're almost there. We're definitely going to see a 5 nanometer processor and then a 3 nanometer maybe one day. Also, speakers are going to be getting better. Like the iPhone is just going to be perfect in every way. And there will be a point where this will, this will no longer be possible. But until that day, I'll be making these videos for a, a while to come. You know, to me, it's, it's incredible that I'm still doing this almost 10 years later, like nine years about working with iPhones. I really can't believe it. And we're launching our iPhone case here very soon. I, we're still in prototyping, but so close, guys. I wanted it to be the best iPhone case ever. And I say this because iPhones really have not changed or gotten more durable, really. Like the glass supposedly has gotten better, but in our testing, the XS, XS Max really are not that durable still. They're very heavy phones. So you still need to protect it with something. And hopefully my entire my entire YouTube career led to me making some very cool products for you guys. I hope so. But there it is, guys. That is 12 years of iPhone, and hopefully I'll be here for many more to come. Just an amazing journey all around. Apple, well done, and I can't wait to see what you guys have been cooking up for this year. Wait, we already know, almost. Okay, see you on the next one, guys. And this was my birthday post, so I hope you enjoyed it. Peace.